Well, that ain't a bad time at all. Hey guys, this is my review for Bad Times at El Royale. Now, this is a movie that actually I've been really looking forward to. The trailer kind of came out of nowhere, and when I saw Drew Goddard's name both attached to the director and writing, I was very interested. This was actually kind of reminiscent of Identity. If anyone remembers that movie, it's a similar sort of situation with people and strangers at this motel, and people start dying and there's this mystery unraveled and within it. This is a much better version in my opinion. This is a much more grounded, this is a much more believable and much more entertaining version. While there really isn't a central plot to what is happening, there's three separate narratives, it is the characters that you will be so drawn into. Each character in this film is actually quite intriguing in terms of their dynamics, how they're introduced, how the film betrays them. Just generally well acted by everyone. Jeff Bridges is fantastic as this preacher character who has severe dementia or Alzheimer's happening to him. His character is one of the more pivotal points. The other main character is played by Cynthia Ervo. She is fantastic. I don't know where she's been, but she's amazing. Not only is she a fantastic character, she's kind of the regular person in this situation, but she's also a fantastic singer. She sings a lot. That's another thing I should say about this film is it has an amazing soundtrack, a bunch of fantastic songs from the 50s and 60s. And I wanted to buy the CD immediately until I saw that it, there isn't a physical copy available yet, which is weird because this is a fantastic soundtrack. The film is a very engaging ride, especially with you trying to figure out what's really going on, who is who. The film doesn't really let go. It grips you along the whole time. And there's a lot of twists in this. There's definitely some turns that I didn't expect. And admittedly, there's actually one character who I thought would be nowhere near as important or as interesting, and that's the bellboy in this. He is actually really good. Miles is a fantastic character, and he has probably one of the most interesting arcs throughout the film. Otherwise, everyone else is really good. John Hamm's good. Dakota Johnson's actually not too bad. Chris Hemsworth is this crazy, super hunked up uh, Charles Manson kind of guy is pretty cool. Now the one thing I will say is, like I said, there isn't really a main narrative. These three different narratives kind of converge by accident. And how the film concludes is admittedly a little bit of a, oh, okay, that's it? Not I'm saying that it's bad, it just kind of ends in my opinion. It's not as whoa as the internal concept is. It kind of grounds itself for its ending. Whether that's a good or positive thing, that's up to you. That's just kind of my assumption of it. It goes from this very interesting, very dynamic core of film and then it kind of grounds itself with its ending. In the end, I did very much enjoy El Royale. I did very much enjoy the music, the characters. The film does have a little bit of a long run time. It is two hours and 20 minutes, so Maybe you could have trimmed a little bit because there's a lot of shots of nothing. It is building towards something and it is very well shot, but admittedly there's some dark, empty spaces, I would say, a little bit here and there. El Royale is a really good time. You guys should definitely see it. It's a powerhouse cast. It's a powerhouse kind of film, and it's a very engaging one. It really keeps you on your toes. In the end, I'm going to give Bad Times at the El Royale a 6 out of 7. It's a fun time. I enjoyed it. Once a physical copy of that soundtrack comes out, I'm buying it because I'm going to listen to it in my car. It's a very, very good soundtrack. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, see you next time.